Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Survival School series. One thing I want to note, I did some quick resting in between episodes there. It was almost like a misclick, so I uh, rested for an hour, and now I'm at 100% condition. That's how I got up from 98 to 100. But otherwise, we are back in business. We've got a storm outside. It is nice and lovely. I am actually going to break down some stuff in order to get some water, because... You really don't want to go to sleep. You might be thinking, okay, nighttime, let's go to sleep and start again tomorrow with more stuff to do and stuff to learn. But we need to resolve our thirst meter first because you get very quickly dehydrated when you are sleeping in the long dark. So one of the things I need to do is get some water. But unfortunately, I can't, I don't have any kindling. I don't have anything really to drink. So what I'm going to do is light our lantern to get some light. Now we can't do this forever. We only have so much fuel. So I can't just break down stuff that's going to take 45 minutes to break down. This is going to be a little bit challenging to do, to tell you the truth. I might have to drink my soda, in fact. But just to show you what these dynamics are like, I set my lantern down there, and I'm going to break this down. It's going to take 15 minutes. We're probably going to see that light start to flicker, I would imagine. Oh, no, we didn't. Hang on. How much fuel do we have in it? You going to tell me, game? Well, let's look at it this way. It's actually still about half full. Didn't take as much time as I thought. So anyway, oh, there it is up in the upper left corner. So actually still doing pretty well on the lantern, but we still don't want to waste that fuel. So let's now hop over here to the wood matches. Again, slightly better chance of success with a wood match. Notice there than with the cardboard match. We're going to go with Cattail Head. We're going to light this other book on fire as a way to get started. And the book, of course, will give us a few minutes on the fire as well. And then we just got one reclaimed wood. That's not a lot, but it'll be enough to get some water. And hopefully we have good luck starting this fire the first time. 80% chance is pretty good. And every every fire we do start, of course, we also are working towards improving our fire starting skill. Which will, as it improves, as you reach the next level anyway, you'll have the ability to... Start fires a little bit better. Alright, so... Field Dressing Your Kill, Volume 1. Picked that up a moment ago in the last episode. Didn't say anything about it, but I'll get to it in just a moment. So, we're at 39 minutes on this fire. Let's go ahead and melt... Hmm, what can we get away with? Let's just go ahead and melt 0.2 gallons of snow, because we just don't have a lot of time on this fire. And this might be enough to get us through the night. So we've melted 0.2 gallons. Now, now, Notice now that we can purify the water with some of the tablets we picked up in the last episode. Or you can boil the water. Since we've got the fire going and 21 minutes left on it, I'm going to go ahead and boil this. And there's a couple of things that I could do here. I could make tea if I wanted to. And that actually would use some of the water that I just boiled. And it would also improve my rest. So if my condition was particularly poor, that would be something to consider doing. I'm not going to worry about it now. Just going to drink that water. Notice we are down to 0 0.07 gallons from 0 0.2, so that's almost all of our water. But now we're in a very good, very good position to sleep through the night. So let's go ahead and sleep for solid nine hours. We're not going to get to sleep all that long, and this is why. You woke up fully rested. One of my favorite mechanics about the long dark, but it is a thing even when it is in the middle of the night and the, circa the circadian rhythm, excuse me, would keep most people asleep. The way the game currently works is that if you hit your rested meter's peak, if, if your, your tiredness meter fills all the way up, you'll wake up no matter what time of day it is. You will never sleep through until morning. So that's the way the system currently works. Be wary of that when you're setting your sleep time. We've got two hours darkness left, so... I do need to drink a little bit more. I'm going to drink the soda instead because our hunger meter is actually kind of low as well. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone there. And that brings me to another thing that you can do to pass the time if you can't sleep, which is passing the time. So you can select any item that you can sleep with, whether it is a bedroll, whether it, whether it is an actual bed, or if you are sitting in a car, you can also sleep or pass time. But you can also just pull up the radio menu, go to Campcraft, and pass the time that way. So we need to pass the time for, let's say, two hours. Well, actually, we just need to pass for one hour because we got one hour of darkness left. So there we go. There's some daylight. That's all I needed. Now, with that, I can now repair things again, which I need to get back to doing. Mainly, I was repairing... Let's see, I was repairing these items. So let's go ahead and keep repairing our... Oh, actually, that was my shell. I 
failed. Damn. Now, when you fail, you do lose cloth. It sucks. <laughs> it's it's not fun. Okay, there's that. What was the other item? Yes, I was repairing this. Okay, let's take a let's take a second to see how those items compare again. We were trying to figure out which item we wanted to wear in our upper half. It seems like the thin wool sweater. Uh, well, at 91% condition, it's got better wind protection than a 95% condition new hoodie. Or it's got equivalent. So that means it's going to be better on the outside. So we're going to put this on here. And then we're going to put the new hoodie on on the inside. And of course, you don't see any of it because we've got a decent light shell on, on top of all that. But yes, that's what we're doing. So we've figured out that situation. We no longer have any additional clothing items. So the game is not giving us any of those icons to let us know. But anyway, now let's continue repairing some of the other items because something at 29% condition is not going to give us that much protection. For instance, right now we're at literally 0.3 degrees from our socks. These are wool socks. These are actually pretty nice. So we should be repairing these up so we get the full benefit from wearing them. So that is, this should also be one of your first priorities when you're starting a new game, making sure not only that you have good clothing uh, f from what you've found, but that you also uh, repair up the clothing that you do have. And let's also go ahead and repair. Again, we have plenty of cloth because of the bedroll that we harvested. Up, oh, failed. Damn. So we've lost a couple of cloth to the failures. Okay, we are almost good. Work gloves require cured leather to repair, and we do have some I've cured so leather as well. My life. Okay, getting pretty hungry. Notice that time does pass at an accelerated rate when you're repairing. You need to be careful about this. All right, so that's a little bit better. I think, because I do need to get food and water, I think I'm going to go ahead and chill out regarding my clothing. It feels like 44 degrees in here now, so we're plenty warm at the moment, which is nice. Let's take a moment to see what I can do with my food situation. Now, I've got four cattails. Each cattail stock is 150 calories. I cannot underestimate, or actually, I cannot overestimate, I should say, the benefit of collecting as many cattails as possible, especially on higher difficulties. It is an amazing way to get large amounts of food and prolong your survivability, especially when you are traveling and you need just you need a guaranteed source of food. If you know where a creek is where there will be cattails, this is one way to find it. But again, this is a style choice. There are people who rely much more on the automatically deposited corpses that where where you can just find not I'm sorry, not human corpses, but deer corpses where you can find deer meat just laying around. That's another way to survive. I'm going to go ahead and see, I don't have, if I eat dry items, it's going to dry me out. So let me eat these sardines instead, because there's a little bit of water in them. I'm going to do the same with the soup. As far as condition goes, you want to start getting nervous around the 30%. When you're at 20%, especially if it's below 10%, if this is actually red instead of orange, then you want to really be concerned. Um, and tell you what, I will go ahead and drink this water. It's not a lot. It's not even going to fill up past, uh, filled up past the lettering, but not much beyond that. we got nine hours daylight left. It is time for some good old scavenging. Again, we've just kicked off this run. What's this? Oh, okay, it's just light hitting that in a weird way. We've just kicked off a run. We should be quite mobile. I'm actually... To tell you the truth, I have not been as mobile probably as I would in a solo run because of all the things that I wanted to make sure I explained. So, good news is it's a wonderful day. There is currently, let's have a look. If I pull up this. Okay, the air temperature, if you pull up the clothing menu, you can see what the actual temperature is. So there's currently a very slight wind chill, but it's not much of one. Oh no, I shouldn't have said anything about the weather. There's literally fog rolling in right now because I said the weather was great. The game has a way of hearing you when you talk about how well things are going. Even if you're just talking to yourself and, and not recording a tutorial for YouTube. <laughs> and uh, this is what happens. But we're going to head this way anyway because we can follow the edge of the lake and find good things. Also, I'm going to, as you can see, I'm walking through the reeds here because I want to find more cattails. And of course, being out here on the lake, there are additional spots that I can find. There are, or I guess I should say, there are additional places where I can light fires. The Every single fishing hut has a fireplace inside it. 
a working fireplace, a stove, where you can light fires. And that's by design, because if you're fishing, you want to have a fire right next to you so you don't freeze to death while you're looking for your next meal, right? For those of you curious about how fishing works, actually, tell you what, let's take a moment. One of the other basic mechanics in the game is crafting, and you can craft at the workbench, which you might have seen briefly in the first episode. I haven't talked about it yet, because it's not time to talk about the workbench. We're going to pick up sticks. Hi, here's a branch. Take ten minutes to break down? Sure, let's do it. And this branch gives us three sticks. Nice. Hey, another branch. Let's do it. Three more sticks. Excellent. So, you can craft stuff at the workbench, but also, if you pull up your radio menu, you can craft stuff on the fly. Close the radio menu by accident. There are only so many things you can craft on the fly, but you can get a torch on the fly if you have reclaimed wood. You can get tinder plugs by harvesting sticks. You can get fishing tackle, which I have some hook and some line. I have a hook and some line from when I first arrived at our safe house. And then we have, you can make bandages out of cloth. And you can make old man's beard wound dressings, which are advanced bandages, if you have bandages and old man's beard lichen. So old man's beard lichen is another one of those harvestable items you can find in the game world that you should grab every single time you see it. Not even I am great about picking up old man's beard every single time I see it. But the great thing about that particular type of wound dressing is that it disinfects the wound at the same time as wrapping it, which would normally be a two-step process requiring two different ingredients. If you have an old man's beard wound dressing, you can knock out those two birds with one stone. It's pretty nice. Let's do a little bit of crafting on the fly right now. Let's make our fishing tackle. We're not going to fish yet, but may as well. So that's how that works. Only took 15 minutes, and now we got some fishing tackle. That stuff is a little bit harder to come by in higher difficulty modes. You might have to even kill an animal for its guts in order to get... Um, you, then you'd have to cure the guts, and then you'd have to use the cured guts to make the fishing line. You might find the hooks in the world, but you won't find the line until you kill animals. That is, again, on the higher difficulty settings. On Voyager, you can craft it from found items the way I just did. All right, still looking for cattails. Meanwhile, we're making it. It's not actually that foggy. This is not the thickest that fog gets, so I can still see a good ways in front of me. All right, so this is the western access point here. Don't have any weapons yet, of course. Once you've played the Long Dark for a while, it's almost reflex to try and... Uh, just like pull out your rifle whenever you start to feel the slightest bit like there might be a wolf or a bear around. But I don't have a rifle yet. There are various places in Mystery Lake and everywhere in the world where rifles can spawn. I won't tell you where they are, but if we happen to find one, then make a mental note. Because that is one spot where you might find a rifle. <laughs> Again, if you happen to just be jumping into this episode as your first Survival Series episode, uh, it might benefit you to go back and watch the first few minutes of Survival School 1. Because uh, I, I talk about kind of how I'm setting up this tutorial, I am not, I am very deliberately not going to tell you everything about this game. I'm not going to tell you where to find every little rifle. I'm not going to tell you where, you where you could find every possible prep or cache or forge. We're not even going to leave Mystery Lake. I'm not even going to talk about I if this is any good to eat. where uh, it might be. It's dog food, so it'll taste like crap, but it'll be good to eat. Um, I'm not even going to talk about where you can go to different zones in the Lawn Dark. Okay, so just be aware of that. Because <laughs> I want to leave the exploration to you. All right, so nothing really... Ah, this is a surprisingly empty hut for Voyager difficulty, but that's fine. Let's just move on to the next one. So we've got a couple burned out next to us here. Oh, okay, the fog has gotten worse. All right, I am going to continue moving along the bank. I have to be careful, though, because there could be wolves. And I didn't even look too thoroughly. Notice it feels like 31 degrees, so we are just barely below freezing. For those of you who are not familiar with Fahrenheit, 32 is freezing. 32 is the equivalent of zero Celsius. I've had many, many people on YouTube comments tell me, Hadrian, switch to metric units. They make so much more sense. <laughs> I know, it's just what you're used to, right? And they do make more sense. Zero is freezing, you know. 
it's not an arbitrary 66 pounds for your weight limit. It's, I think it's 100 kilograms or something like that, or maybe 50 kilograms. I don't, I don't know the conversion. See, so yeah, I, I don't know the metric system off the top of my head. I've learned it, but anyway. All right, so some firewood, some newspaper on the ground. There's also a backpack over here. Let's pick that up. Hey, water. Very nice. That couldn't have come at a better time. All right, so now there's three huts here that we need to explore. That's better, as opposed to burned out huts. So let's have a look around, shall we? Again, we're in pure... Hey, two chocolate bars. Not bad. We're in pure scavenging mode at the moment. Banged up pinnacle peaches. Pinnacle peaches are one of the best food items you can get in the game. The only thing you should kind of think about is when you find them, especially once you are more burdened down with other things that you're carrying, you may want to consider eating them sooner than later because they are freaking heavy. A pound and a tenth. Okay, they're, they're definitely, aside from the 14 cattails I'm carrying, four, cattail stalks, excuse me, they are certainly the, the heaviest item in my inventory. Tell you what, let's go ahead and break down this crate. Some of you might be thinking, hey, why don't you, uh, why don't you drink? Why don't you eat? Your meters are getting pretty low there. Again, until they're at zero, until I have a caution indicator on the screen, there's no rush. You just have to keep an eye on them. You have to manage them. And right now, I know that I have what I need to fill them up, so I'm not in a rush to fix them at the moment. My condition will not be affected. It it, it won't help me to, to have those any higher. By you know, snow. If I nothing to drink. Oh uh, yeah, you got plenty to drink. I'm just not giving you stuff to drink yet. Sorry. <laughs> so that's just something to be aware of. You don't have to eat. Oh, fire log. This is one of the this. better food items, or, or not food items, but uh, wood items you can find in the game. So let's go ahead and get that. Condensed milk, one of the better food items. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. And let's look over here. Nothing. No container, maybe. As you learn to play the long dark, the faster you are able to do what I'm doing now, just moving place to place, picking up everything you can, and bringing it back to your safe spot, the better. So I mentioned in the last episode that I would also talk about the weather in this episode. Every zone in the long dark has... Here's some fur firewood. I thought that was a clothing item for a second first. Uh, every zone in the long dark has its own kind of... Oh, hey, running shoes. This is coming kind of handy. I'm probably just going to break those down, but I'll pick them up for now. And there's a summit soda, some condensed milk. So we're getting lots of food items, thankfully. Every zone has its own weather pattern. And it's a learnable weather pattern. And I'm not necessarily going to talk about what each one is for the reasons I've discussed in this video. I'm going to go ahead and eat these pinnacle peaches because the peaches are immersed in water. This is a very good food for building up both meters at once. Watch what happens. See? Notice there was one downside to what I just did, though. I actually didn't even catch it because I forgot we don't have a can opener yet. It said can smashed open, 21% food lost. So because I don't have any tools, I don't have a can opener with which to open those cans yet. Anytime I have something canned, okay, and I believe I had... Uh, a uh, can of tomato soup earlier in the episode. Anytime you have something canned, if you don't have a tool to open it, you can smash it open, but you're going to lose some of the stuff because it spilled out all, all over the floor, right? So anyway, as I was saying, every zone has its own weather pattern. And kind of learning what weather precedes what can kind of help you develop basic instincts about what is about to happen. Is a blizzard on its way? Is it about to... What, what does the fog mean, for instance? And this was a somewhat more recent addition. Well, I, I say more recent. I mean, it was added maybe about nine or ten months ago um, to the game in one of the more recent patches. But it hasn't been there since the beginning of the Lawn Dark's early access. So it might be a newer feature to some of you that are coming back to the game trying to relearn some of the basics by watching this. So there are, in fact, weather patterns now that are unique to each zone. All right, I need to kind of look out that direction, see if I see a black shape moving. Don't see any wolves yet. Don't hear any, but you always this situation right now. Walking around like this. Okay, here's the final cabin. Walking blindly, especially when you don't know where wolves and bears typically walk. They do have patrol routes that are quite uh, standard. 
you want to be very careful just walking around in the fog because you never know when you oh hey hope nobody needs this anymore Trent Backer's been camping and fishing on the frozen lakes and ponds of Great Bear Island since he was a kid with a lot of fish and only a little frostbite to show for it <laughs> or Trent Backer I guess um all right let's pop in here and see what else we can find Tinder plug, lantern fuel, very nice. Sometimes there could be items under there, so I'm just being very careful not to miss anything. And I am good. I haven't really seen or heard any wolves out on the ice today. There can be a bear, however. And if there is one, I could be walking right toward him right now. <laughs> Yay! But the thing about bears in the Lawn Dark is they are a little bit less aggressive than wolves in that they walk more slowly. They might turn toward you, but they won't start moving towards you rapidly if they see you. They'll kind of start lumbering toward you. Once they're at a certain range, they'll charge. But as long as you stay out of that range, even if a bear starts coming towards you, you can generally back off and escape one. Wolves, and of course bears do more damage <laughs> than wolves. Wolves are quicker to lunge at you. There are also ways to hear bears coming, even in the fog. And right now, I don't hear that. When I hear it, I will tell you so that you learn, so that you start learning to listen for it. And no, I'm not just talking about their footsteps. That is definitely something you can hear. See, this is a bear cave. Interesting. So this definitely indicates you can always tell a bear cave because of the deer bones, right? But there does not appear to be a bear nearby at the moment. I would do anything for a drink right now. We've got plenty to drink. So we will be okay. I'm going to keep following the shoreline for now. It feels like 39 degrees. We're actually pretty damn warm, all things considered. So even in the fog, we've managed to explore quite a bit. One of the main takeaways that I would emphasize about what I'm doing right now is, again, it's dangerous. I kind of know where the animals are. Oh, let's take a peek in that hut real quick. I, I, I kind of know where the animals tend to spawn. So... I'm getting cautious at certain points that are natural to my experience with the game. You don't just, as I said earlier, you don't just want to go walking out into the fog as a rule. And hopefully that's kind of an intuitive thing. <laughs> yeah, that's some expert advice from me. Don't go walking randomly out into fog. <laughs> because you could never have figured that out on your own. So anyway, yeah. In general, especially because fog can thicken, right? So you might... This happened to me in one of my more recent playthroughs on the channel. Is I was... I wandered out into fog. It was relatively light. And then while I was harvesting meat on a deer corpse, it got a lot thicker. And my ability to see to where I needed to go and make sure there were no animals in front of me. And this was on high difficulty to where the animals represented a, a, a grave threat. Um, that ability was extremely diminished. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to head back to safe house. We still have a good amount of daylight left, I think. I'm still doing my best to wander through the reeds. Aha, I just heard our first wolf. So there are actually wolves out here. I just don't know where they are exactly. All the more reason to be careful. So, we haven't seen a wolf or bear yet. But one thing I'll go ahead and tell you is that, of course, they do have detection radii. They do have ranges at which you can safely avoid them, and ranges at which they will walk towards you. And there are certain things which decrease that and increase that. If you crouch, for instance, you decrease the detection range. Am I walking towards... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, that's right. 
following the banks all the way into the, the river entrance where we started out. But, so you can crouch. That's one thing you can do. But you can also be carrying deer meat, and that will actually increase the detection range. They will smell you coming from farther away for reasons that I'm sure are quite obvious. So if you're carrying raw deer meat, if you cook it, it's a little bit different, but if it's raw deer meat, you will attract attention to yourself when you don't necessarily want to, said Hadrian from recent painful experience. So just be mindful of that. All right, we've hit the 25 minute mark for this episode. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one here. In the next one, we're gonna talk a little bit more about just the nomadic playstyle and maybe the merits, if you will, of following that style versus hunkering down and staying in one spot pros and cons of each, as well as just continuing to scavenge the neighboring areas, maybe finding some weaponry for the first time. By the end of the series, we should have both a bow and arrow, maybe not tons of arrows, because I don't plan to do any crafting of arrows in this episode, or in this series, uh, but um, we should have both a bow and arrow and a rifle. So we'll talk about different weapon types you can find in the game at present as well. So anyway... Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New survival, science fiction, and or simulation content airs every single day at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.